Foundation uh, update, monthly update with Brian Johnson. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea if you saved your dancing for inside. Uh, it's a little slick. We might, we might have slick. some different moves if you yeah, go outside. There you go. You, you might even maybe some moves you didn't know you had. Un unintended moves, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it, is, it is a pretty sight to sit here and watch the snow The snow out, globe so. has been shaken. It has, it has. It looks nice. So. Uh, what's, what's going on as we get ready to start a new year? Yeah. And uh, obviously a, a lot of goals uh, set uh, yeah. uh, for the new year. Well, today we're going to kind of run with a theme of scholarships ah, on a few things. It so. is important. It is important. So... Um, a couple things starting off before that, um, of course we've been talking for the last few months about our new software rollout that mm -hmm. we had. Um, that's something that um, we're excited about where donors can um, get information online, actually access accounts um, for donor advised funds, can make grant requests through that. So um, we actually just sent out fund statements over the last week. Um, so if you had already asked for that by email or online, um, you would have gotten that. Check out your inbox, make sure that you got that. Um, if you get it by paper and you'd like to switch over to electronically, we'd love to be able to set you up on that too. So don't hesitate to give us a call or shoot us an email and let us know that um, you prefer that. So um, it's, it's really a great way to be able to get information more real time. We send out fund statements throughout the year, but this is something that a donor can log in at any point and see if donations have been made or fund balances, things like that as well. So, so good. Um, along those lines, we're in the process of rolling out an online grant application. Mm. This has been a very requested <laughs> and part of our software transition is that now it allows us to do online grant applications. So. Wow. Cool. Um, gone are the days of having to fill in a form and send it into us. We'll be able to do that completely online. Um, we're, we're hoping by the first quarter this year that we have that process ready to go. So we're working on some of the details and testing and all those things. But um, we're hoping that in the near future we're able to offer that. So if there's organizations out there that are looking for grants right now, um, we do still have our and the process where we have the application on our website um, and you can still use that form fill it in send it in to us but um, stay tuned for mm -hmm. the soon to be <laughs> line grant application that'll, um, that, that'll, that'll uh, make things a, a lot smoother make it smoother less paper yeah. more more access to information the process for awesome. a donor to be able or a grantee to go in and fill out an application and and save that information and come back to it later, all those exciting things, and then through the whole administration process, you know, a lot more streamlined. Awesome. So we're well, looking forward to that. We try and make make the process as smooth as possible. So there we go. looking forward to that. So um, talking about scholarships, wanted to put out a reminder um, that the application deadline is February 1st. Be here before you know Coming it. Coming up next week. Next week. So if students have started that and have not hit that little submit button at the end or still waiting on information, I know one of the concerns students always have is if they've asked for information from an outside source, whether that's there, so it may not be a bad idea just to check with that. Um, if you have questions or concerns, we're, we're still into a little bit of a new system, so every once in a while we find glitches. So. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our scholarship coordinator, Shannon Berger. Um, she's um, on top of it and been able to help folks work through those situations if, if they have any issues. Because you know how electronics are great <laughs> most of the time, but every once in a while you find yeah. that glitch. You get so, a hiccup every now and then. So don't hesitate to give us a call if you have a question or concern or not seeing something that you think you should or seeing something that you think you shouldn't. Um, all those things are in there. So February 1st. What's that phone number, Brian? So the phone number in our office, 574-223-2227. Okay. Um, and again, Shannon Berger is our scholarship coordinator. If you if you need to send her an email, scholarships at nicf.org. Um, Everything's so simple. It, it is. We, we try and keep it that way. So, um, But we always um, want to help try and connect students with those applications. So again, February 1st. 
still have a couple days to get that information in on a snow day maybe it'd be a there great time yeah. to finish up that application so um, i did want to put in a plug um, one thing that we've been trying to do is promote some of the specific scholarships um, in the last couple of years the number of students applying for our ag related scholarships has been down so mm. um, just a little plug we have a few of those that are for students that are involved in agriculture or planning to study agriculture doesn't necessarily mean that you have to enroll in a career in farming but maybe it's ag business mm. um, you think about Fulton County we are so so fortunate to have all the agriculture industry that we do so um, some scholarships some familiar names Simon D um, Dale Isinger and Robert Toby Agriculture Scholarship, the George M. and Lyle Schwank Memorial Scholarship, Nelson W. Sadler Memorial Ag Scholarship, and the R.B. Fear Agriculture Scholarship are just some of those that um, that are used to support students who are studying some sort of ag related mm -hmm. field. So it could be you are planning to farm, it could be that you're planning to work in an ag related business. I mean, there's so much. So much technology involved in that now, yeah. there's a number of things that you can be doing in that. So if you're thinking about one of those fields and you haven't applied for those scholarships, please take a moment and check it out, yeah. see if it's something that, that's applicable to you. So um, Another one that I wanted to mention um, that the application isn't available yet, but will be in February, um, the name Marjorie Phillips no, yes. is very familiar to anybody that's been <laughs> probably ever to a Rochester yes. sporting event. Yes. Um, a longtime supporter of Rochester Athletics, uh, ticket taker. You probably yeah. either bought or handed, yeah, exactly. handed Marjorie. Unfortunately, she passed away a few years ago, but um, created a scholarship um, that helps support students who are graduates of Rochester High School and who have completed one year at Purdue University. Okay. So we're going to be um, having an application specifically for the scholarship. So if you know students that qualify for that, um, again, Rochester High School and completed one year at Purdue, um, it, it's fairly flexible as far as um, the students that receive that, but um, wanted to help keep Marjorie's legacy alive and continue to support those Rochester yeah. High School That's students awesome. that that she took tickets for yeah. for their sporting events. Yeah. So many, many years. Many, many years. So um, that application, um, again, keep an eye on our website. Um, that application, I think it'll be about the first week in February okay. that that'll be available. So, awesome. um, But a lot of those students probably are at school right now. So mom <laughs> and dad, if you're listening, or aunt and uncle, or grandma and grandpa, yeah. Uh, pass that word along to those students that may qualify for that. What I wanted to talk about today, we often talk about a few of the newer scholarships that we have at the foundation. Um, we have over 65 scholarships that wow. are for Fulton County students. So um, just kind of to highlight some of these, because a lot of times people will look at our scholarships yeah. and say, well, what? why is this scholarship have these criteria mm -hmm. and so we look at um, a lot of times these scholarships are created in memory of somebody specific um, and so it's wonderful to kind of keep that legacy going so I have a handful of scholarships that I want to talk about and you think about the criteria and exemplifies what these people were about so um, I did mention in our ag related scholarship the Dale Isinger and Robert Toby agriculture scholarship um, this was a scholarship that was created by Tim and Leanne Isinger um, in memories of their fathers. Um, Dale was a Rochester High School teacher for a number of years. Um, he also was the owner of a nursery in our community. And Robert Toby was involved in agriculture, farmed in our community. And something that I didn't realize until we created this scholarship but he was one of the founders of the Rochester High School FFA chapter. Oh, wow, cool. So a neat legacy to leave behind of, of all these students that, that are involved in that. So um, this is a scholarship that's specifically for Rochester High School graduates. Um, and again, looking for students who are going into a career in agriculture or maybe horticulture, um, something along those lines. So. 
um, a neat way to remember two um, really impactful individuals in our community. Um, the next one that I wanted to mention was the newer scholarship that we have, the Amber Dyson Scholarship. Um, this was created a couple of years ago in memory of Amber Dyson. Um, she was involved in the medical field, um, had been um, a graduate of Vincennes University um, and worked at Howard County Hospital um, as a respiratory therapist. And she oftentimes made the, the statement that she just wanted to help people. Um, and even, even though she, she passed away in early 2020, um, she had this idea that she still wanted to help people. And so this scholarship was created by her family in her memory um, to continue that. So it's for students who are graduates of Rochester, Caston, or Tippecanoe Valley Schools um, and are looking to continue their education in the medical related field. It doesn't have to be anything specific. There's no requirements as far as nursing, or radiology, or any of those, any medical related field, but um, really just wanted to help people, um, which is a, a neat legacy yeah. to leave. A new one that we have, this is actually the first year that we've been able to distribute it, is the Robert E. Hinkle Education Technical Memorial Scholarship. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hinkle was a teacher for a long time at Tippecanoe Valley High School. Um, he was a math teacher, um, very well received. Little known fact, he helped start the fishing club at hmm. Tippecanoe Valley. I know over the past couple of years I've seen a few times yeah. where they've been involved in tournaments and won awards and so um, he was, was an individual that taught students but also cared about students, helped students um, with some of those needs that were outside the classroom. And, um, if you're involved in fishing, he liked fishing. <laughs> and sometimes you just get out there and relax yeah. and yeah. that's a way to, way to relax and be able to uh, let go of some of those yeah. problems. And, and enjoy life. <laughs> and it, it's, yeah, and it's neat to see how that's, that's continued his legacy, that, mm -hmm. that program is still very active. But, um, so this is for students who are graduates of Tippecanoe Valley High School um, and are looking to pursue a degree in the field of math or education or a technical related field and it can be a two or four year um, school okay. and so that's um, something that, that he wanted to help students and, and throughout his life he helped students fulfill these dreams so you think about the legacy that he left as a teacher. And then the last one that I wanted to mention this morning was the Taylor Quinn Mars Scholarship. Of course, Taylor was, uh, was, was taken way too early, um, a very talented artist mm -hmm. um, in our community. And so this scholarship continues her legacy um, to help support students who are graduates of Rochester High School um, and with, with particular attention given to students who are pursuing an art degree. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you think about um, some of the things that we have around our community. I think one of the things that I love right now walking around seeing the banners yes. around. We see the banners that are created by artists in honor of some of our military heroes. And, and you think about some of the other banners that we see throughout the year just in downtown Rochester makes it, makes it nice to right. a nice downtown. So you think about that art and that legacy of art. So, um, keeping Taylor's memory alive in our community as well. So, so thinking about some of those things, a lot of times we get questions, well, why do I have to be doing this? Or why do I have to have gone here? One, one that I always love is um, Jim Barkman. You can't say the word Jim Barkman without thinking about Riddle Elementary right. School. When you spend your entire educational career at one school and you have a street named after you, uh, of course, one of the criteria is that students had to attend rural elementary school during their career. So it makes sense because you think about Jim Barkman, yeah. you think about rural yeah. elementary school. Exactly. So, um, so some of those scholarships um, have those criteria and we kind of get that glimpse of what people were about with these. And so it's a, a neat way to keep someone's memory alive or honor someone. and let future generations know that hey this is uh, this is what this person was about and you're continuing this legacy right. so it's it's neat to see that and I always also tell students 
um, as you're going through the scholarship process, think about um, when we're awarding these scholarships, yes, these are financial awards, which are important, but it's also folks from our community looking at students' accomplishments mm -hmm. and saying, hey, we believe in you. We believe that you can make that next step. Right. And if you're one of those folks that have ever heard the statement or maybe been the person that said the statement, well, kids are, kids are the problem. <laughs> I challenge you, get involved in the scholarship committee. Right. You'll find out that kids are not the problem. There's a lot of pretty amazing kids out there that have already done some really amazing things for our community um, and, and just have that bright future in front of them. So thank you to all the donors that have created these scholarships. Like I said, we have over 65 scholarship funds. And Brian, last, how much did you give out last year? It was, was almost $169,000 in scholarships. Amazing. Yeah, so that's awesome. It is. And, and you think about the cost of education and, and these scholarships can go a long way to making that more affordable for mm -hmm. students. So I encourage you, if you have not applied and you're graduating senior or if you haven't clicked that submit button yet, <laughs> Do that before February 1st. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call um, Shannon Berger, our scholarship coordinator. Um, her the phone number at the office, 574-223-2227. Um, or you can email Shannon, scholarships at nicf.org, um, and work through that process. We want to make sure that if you qualify for these scholarships, that you're part of that application process. And then um, in May we'll be having the conversation about all these students that have, <laughs> have graduated and, and get the chance to celebrate right. with them so looking forward to that as well so well if folks have questions about anything that we talked about um, new software rollout I will make the comment if you are one of those folks that get it electronically and you're not sure where to go to log in check out our website nicf.org we have a a number of places where it says donor portal and that's the place that you want to go to log in if you have trouble or if you are not currently on that system let us know we'd love to get you set up on that um, but if you have any questions about what we talked about you can check us out online nicf.org um, we're on Facebook Northern Indiana Community Foundation of course our three counties Fulton Miami and Stark counties are all um, under that heading don't hesitate to give us a call. My line is 574-224-3223. And I normally say, don't hesitate to stop by the office. Today, Today you maybe you want to hesitate a little bit. We'll be there tomorrow. So yeah. if it's not urgent, probably even though we don't have a whole lot of snow out there, it still... looks like it's still coming our way. Yeah. So be careful. Um, but feel free to stop by our office, 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas or questions you have for our community um, and how we can help you make an impact in the community. Brian, thanks for your time here this morning. And uh, kids, remember. February 1st. February 1st. And we'll talk to you again next month. Thanks, Randy. Brian Johnson of the Fulton County Community Foundation here on his monthly report. Here's Pink now. Never.